Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Auburn Energy Committee meeting on Monday, March 28th. It is now called to order at approximately 5.40 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and broadcasted by local access programming. Is there anyone here in the audience tonight that's recording the meeting? All right, there being none, let's go to our first agenda item. We have Doreen DeFazio from the town of Sutton here to share with us their experiences with the LED project in town. Thank you for coming, Doreen. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, I, um, I work with Eric Lesbrantz quite a bit. I'm the energy manager for the towns of Millbury and Sutton. And over the course of the past year, the town of Sutton has um, acquired their streetlights and converted them all to LED. And so I was asked by this committee to um, just talk about an overview of what um, the town of Sutton did to go through that process over the past year. We're about 95% done with implementing the lights. And um, overall, it's been a very successful project. So I'm, I'm happy to share it with, with the town of Auburn. So um, just as an introduction, we um, made the decision to purchase the lights and LED technology. Oh, this is, this is basically what I'm going to go through, excuse me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the process of it, um, the considerations that we had to go through as a town and a committee, the advantages of um, converting to LED streetlights, and then the implementation process and time that it took. And then I can take questions at the end. So um, the advantages of LED streetlights is um, it decreases energy consumption and we've already seen additional revenue for the budget. We pretty much wiped out our operational budget of street lights by converting to LED. Um, the visible commitment to efficiency, so, you know, Auburn being a green community, Sutton being a green community, it was a great project for the, the town to do. A lot of our projects are, I, don't, I want to use the term behind the scenes, you know, that people will say, unless it's a solar project or something, towns are saying, or residents would say to us, like, well, what are you doing? What did you spend money on? And this was a very visible project and something that people got really excited about and behind right away. Um, improved safety through enhanced visibility. So LED lights overall, there have been some questions about um, where, you know, are they too bright? Are they too, are, you know, how they have the, the white lights instead of a yellow light? and they tend to hit directly onto the road, which is actually better for vehicles. It reduces maintenance costs due to a longer life. So typically the lights that we had on lasted about three to five years. LED lights typically last about 20 year lifespan. So that saves a lot of maintenance costs as well. Decreased light trespass. What I mean by that is homes that are off right in front of a street light that sometimes homes would call and ask for street lights to be turned off because it was too bright in their driveway or trespassing into their front road where LED lights just hit the road so there's less chance of that happening. Uh, we also have programmable controls which is an opportunity to be able to turn the lights up and down so if there is light trespass we are able to change the wattage so if you have a dangerous intersection we could turn it up a little bit if you're in front of a home or in a, an area that may not need as much lighting, we were able to turn the wattage down a little bit. So that was kind of a neat advantage. So the project scope and um, basically the whole timeline of what we went through with Sutton is the town requested a purchase price from National Grid. And for the town of Sutton for 218 lights, it cost the town $34,000 from National Grid. So I don't know how many lights, um, if Auburn already owns any of their street lights or... I own some. You own some, okay. So, so the first part of the process, Sutton didn't own any of their lights. We're considering this in Millbury as well. Millbury owns about 95% of their lights. But the first step in this is to make sure that you um, get a purchase price from National Grid they have 60 days to respond to you. And once you have that price, you put it into your, your cost. 
um, determining the acquisition and maintenance approach. So this says Paxton Municipal Light. We started. So one of the um, things on the tariff that National Grid will make you do in order to convert to LED lights is, is have a maintenance company. It will no longer be National Grid, which is probably what Auburn has now. So we had to go out and find another maintenance company. And we looked at Paxton Municipal Light to begin with, and they were unable to take on Sutton. So we went with this company called PRT. They're located in Westwood, Massachusetts. And they work with many communities, mostly in the eastern part of the state, which was where most of the acquisitions and conversions have been done at this point. They've been excellent. So um, in our, I don't have the exact cost of what we're paying for maintenance, but it's per light. So we're paying, I want to say it's about $15,000 for them to put in all the lights. And then it's something like per light, and again, with 20 years lifespan on an LED light that really reduces our cost of maintenance with them. So we fin financed securing, oh, I'm sorry, we, we did finance financing through town meeting and um, we did not go through green communities for any of our funding. We went through capital and paid through capital funding and some reallocation of some grant funds in order to pay for these lights. So it does have to go through town meeting. It requires a town meeting vote to secure the lights if, obviously, if you're going to go through something like um, capital funding. And then um, once you get the purchase and sales license agreements from National Grid, you move forward and do the auditing of the lights, which the town of Sutton did ourselves. And we went out and had to really look at how many lights National Grid said that we were paying for and how many lights we wanted to convert to LED. You know, are there, are there lights out there that maybe don't need to be on or um, traffic studies, maybe you want to add some extra roads and we had new roadways being built and had to determine if we wanted floodlights in certain areas. So you go through your whole audited list before you begin your implementation plan. So as I said before, the purchase price from National Grid was a little over $34,000. The maintenance approach we took was to hire PRT. Our financing included capital funds, chap Chapter 90 funds, and reallocated grant funds, and then um, the purchase and sales and license agreements from National Grid. And then um, we wor worked with a consultant. His name's George Woodbury from LightSmart Consulting. He's done many projects up and down the East Coast. And he was able to help us buy um, streetlights from Fred Davis Corporation, which I believe they're a local company as well. If they're not Massachusetts, they're Rhode Island. And we went in with bulk purchase with the city of Providence and the town of Westwood, Mass, too. So by working through a consultant and him knowing what other communities were buying these lights, we were able to get a very good deal for a small town like Sutton. Um, National Grid, I mentioned this before, has 60 days to accept the purchase of the lights and get back to you with the cost. And then PRT began the installation of lights. We have, we should have been done this project by December, but we had um, some, some lights in Sutton that were owned by private residents. And we didn't realize that until after we went through and we kind of did our homework and went back and realized that um, back in the early 90s that the town of Sutton had decided to turn off their street lights for financial reasons and some residents had called and just bought the lights and privately paid. Mm -hmm. And so now, <laughs> at this time, we've contacted these residents or National Grid has for us and said the town would like to take over these lights and convert to LED. And so we had to go and order additional lights and make sure that we have the approval from National Grid to get those converted. But besides that, the project's essentially complete. So um, acquisition will result in immediate savings, like I said, I mean, especially through the maintenance and savings will continue to increase in the future because the LED lights, um, once you purchase the lights and you, ha you convert to LED, you're going to start seeing significant savings in um, the operational budget and 
projects can be accomplished with existing appropriation, you know, if planned ahead. So Millbury is going through Green Communities funding. I just put an application for for them to do half their street lights, some of the ones that are already purchased through Green Communities. And I know that the Green Communities competitive grant is accepting um, funding for that over the course, probably next year as well, if that's something that Auburn is interested in. Or I'd recommend, you know, other appropriation too, because Auburn was be able was able to do it. Millbury is able, is going to be able to do it in a phased approach, meaning taking um, their highest wattage first, using that savings as phase two, mm -hmm. and then you know, so let's say you have 400 watt streetlights, which we have a lot of, and 250 watt streetlights. We're going to buy those first. And with those savings, then we're going to go to phase two and take care of 100 watt and 50 watt. So, and that's all I have. Any questions? Actually, I have a couple. Sure. Um, now you're saying you you had to get a price from National Grid. Correct. Now was that for the purchase of the lights, or what? What was that? So, National Grid does not allow in their tariff. Um, conversion of LED streetlights, so you cannot, you cannot have L you cannot have National Grid owned streetlights be converted to LED. Okay. So the only way around that is to purchase your streetlights. Okay. 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 And so in order to do that, you have to send. So so your supplier will still be National Grid. Yep. Right. But they will ne no, no longer own the poles and the lights. The town will. Okay. And so. You have to, like I said, they give you 60 days. You have to give them a notice. And I'm happy to provide any of this information to Eric that we use for Auburn and that we're using for Millbury. Um, and that light will, f that that memo will formally go into National okay. Grid. And then they'll have 60 days to tell you, okay, Auburn has, you know, 1,400 streetlights or whatever you have, whatever you're purchasing. And this is the purchase price for it. I, I was confused because you said yeah. you got a real good light, uh, price on the lights, but then you were talking about getting. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah, which, so, yeah um, it, it is. It, no, it's a great question because it is confusing. A the, other, the other question I have is I believe National Grid charges like uh, almost like a, uh, a flat rate per lighting hours for, you know, the, the street lights aren't metered per se. Correct, yeah. So how do they change? What do they have a scale for LED, you know, LED lights compared to the sodium vapor or incandescence? That the oh, as far as supply, you mean? Yeah. Yes, um, they do. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but they absolutely do. But it would be do. the same type of yes. format. It's yes. just a Correct. change. Correct. Okay. Yep. So with PRT taking over, it's both the poles and the lights. Yep. Have you, and it was a pretty mild winter, but have you had any um, experiences you've had to use them, whether it was storm or accident related where they've had to come out and replace a light or replace a, a pole or? None. We are still implementing mm -hmm. and we started that in December, but it was one guy who came out with his truck and con changed over about 30 lights a day, 20 mm -hmm. to 30 lights a day. And besides that conversion, we haven't had any issues. Mm -hmm. Obviously with no, no one's asked us, oh, this is too bright, this is too dim. Actually, the questions we get are, when are you finishing? <laughs> because, because the purposely the roadways that we haven't done are the intersection of 146 um, so Central Turnpike and Boston right. Road, mm -hmm. and because we're going to need a police detail for that, so we kind of determined in our project plan that we'd save that until last. So they're going to be doing the those, and then the the uh, private lights that I talked about before, and then a couple of the school floodlights. And so we're just waiting for that second wave of um, street lights to come in for the private lights so we so we can hire them all at once and they can do them all in one to two days and so the questions we get are so when are you converting these or you didn't forget these lights right because mm -hmm. everybody's so happy with awesome. the um, the implementation of all the other lights that there haven't been any, any issues granted it's been four months mm -hmm. but um, before we went to this process I called some other communities such as um, 
the town of Arlington, for example, Lexington, some of the eastern um, communities that have had LED lights for a while, and they haven't had any issues. So, and they've used PRT as well. So, they came highly recommended to us. We were trying to use some, someone a little more local, and that's why I went with Paxton Municipal Light at first. Um, but they could not do the, um, I guess there was some, some turnover there in the past year, and, and they were unable to commit to doing the conversion of all those lights and, and taking people out of Paxton, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not their full-time job to convert Sutton street lights, so <laughs> we understood. <laughs> Uh, yes. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, LED lights come in different color temperatures, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering what color temperature the town chose, what range? Um, I don't have that information here, but I'm happy to provide that. So, as I said during the presentation, too, we um, chose to go with a consultant from this company called LightSmart, and who's worked with communities all over Massachusetts as well as up and down the eastern seaboard and he was he's a very technical person and was able to help us determine um, questions like that as as well as you know the programmable controls and all those questions that we as administrators didn't really know you know we weren't experts on that so we we didn't know and um, he guided us in the right direction. So I do have the information to that but back in my Sutton office. I'm happy to provide that to the committee as well. So we can get that in um, the presentation. So we'll make sure it gets posted with the minutes and sure. do a follow up on the. Um, it was the color temperature? Yeah. Yeah, I can explain more about that if you need it and why I, I ask about it. Well, I can understand. Yeah. Uh, the only other question I think I was thinking, is there any um, any issues with the lights as far as from an environmental perspective, if they get broken, shattered, is there any type of, this might be also one of the more technical questions yeah, too. Yeah, um, we asked that and it didn't seem like a concern. So again, that would be a question for the consultant too. Mm -hmm. He could probably answer that better than I. I have a question, Doreen. Sure. Can you talk to us a bit about resident buy-in and what the town's experience was with that? How did you get the word out and how how were you able to judge the residents' response to the project? Sure. Um, well, Eric, as you know, I have a, um, a social media page on Facebook called the Millbury Sutton Energy Initiative, and so I try to post a lot of projects or upcoming things going on such as the energy fair things like that and um, was able to start talking about it and if residents had questions or concerns they could post on the page we also put a couple of press releases in the Millbury Sutton Chronicle um, larger communities had recommended that you do sort of a pilot program where maybe you choose one street um, a major intersection and put five or six lights up and uh, alert residents to, hey, we just, you know, put LED lights on the corner of Route 12 and 290 or whatever and um, give us your feedback. And, but we decided in Sutton being such a rural community, we're like, well, we don't really have any major intersections here. <laughs> right. And lights are so far apart that people aren't really going to notice. Mm. Um, I, you know, I think in Millbury that would be a great idea to right. do. We're talking about specifically the downtown area in Millbury, and that might be something we consider. I would mm -hmm. recommend it for Auburn mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, we chose not to do that in Sutton because it was brought up at town meeting, and there were no questions or concerns at town meeting. And we had put press, e both in social media and in the newspaper, mm -hmm. and received positive feedback from that. So we just went with it from there. But that's what I would recommend mm -hmm. is, um, you know, leading up to town meeting, putting out some press, a pilot lights in an intersection, and a presentation at town meeting. Mm -hmm. When you mentioned purchasing the, the lights from National Grid, were there any economies of scale purchasing all, or is it a kind of a flat price that they give you? 
They, we talked to the, to the consultant about this, and National Grid has a history of not being consistent with their pricing. And so, again, working with a consultant, which cost us 12000 for the project and was worth every penny because this is something that he was able to tell us, this is a fair price. Or, oh, um, you know, the city of Somerville has four times as many lights as you and is paying less than you, <laughs> which, which are our situation. So he would go back and, and negotiate with National Grid, something that we wouldn't have been aware of. So, um, so we, you know, 34000 was a fair price for what we paid. Um, but as far as what it would be when Auburn looks at it, I don't know. It's going mm -hmm. to depend mm -hmm. on the market. It's going to depend on, again, I would, I would highly recommend you work with a consultant who's working with hundreds of other communities who would be able to let you know if, if Auburn is getting a fair price for their lights. Now, this purchase price for the other lights through National Grid, is that something that could be paid on the energy bill, on the... Uh, the electric bill itself, or do we? Is it just an actual cash outlay? Say that again. I'm not sure. I, I mean, we've we've done some lighting upgrades sure. through National Grid yep. incentive, mm -hmm. and we've paid for them through the electric bills. Right. So when we purchase, well, actually, if we yeah, we'd still be paying for electricity. Can can the purchase of the lights be paid through? The, the savings. Well, through, yeah. the, through the electric bill, the monthly electric bill. I don't. I don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so. It's kind of like a financing. Right. Yeah. Thing. I don't. Okay. I don't and think they do that. I think. I think you have to pay them in right full for the lights. Okay. Yeah. That was curious. But that would be a good question for National Grid, though. Sure. Yeah. I was curious if you knew the wattage of the bulbs that you installed? Sure. So we had a range of lights, I think starting at 250 watts down to 50. And the lights that we bought are 49 watts and are programmable. So we now have in Sutton, they're programmed all at 25 watts. And are, program, and are just as through? bright as the other ones. No one has complained. I mean, it's it's pretty perfect lighting at 25. Is it? Do you do that through the web? No, you, uh, you can. You can, but that was a more expensive program that um, Sutton chose not to do at this time. Yeah. So they're they're literally a a knob that you can turn, and so when they're um, when they were installed from PRT. We chose what we wanted them all on. Oh. Yep. But you can do it through a web and everything too. Mm -hmm. Just there's different costs to that. So of course. we yeah. kinda we kinda went in the middle where we wanted programmable but we we couldn't get that technical yet. Yeah. So well, that's a great a great feature though. Yep. So that's if you swapped out a 400 watt <coughs> bulb and now you're running at 25 watts, you got it. Incredible. Yes. Even at our lowest at 50, we cut that in half. Right. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you were swapping, you're still saving. On every light. And then instead of changing a bulb every three to four years, we have a lifespan of 20. Doing it, yeah. Probably five every times, 20 years. Six, five, six times. So from. From that perspective alone, it's a really attractive. It's just the initial cash outlay. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did the consultant help you understand projected savings? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I didn't add that because, you know, Sutton and Auburn are very different communities, yeah. so I don't think our numbers would help at all. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I can share that information with you too. He'd be more than happy to get on a call or even come to a future meeting if this is a discussion you want to have in more detail. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend that. Did they give you an idea on how long until that $35,000 investment was, you'd get a return on that? The $35,000 we are going to see, um, Probably within 18 months. Whoa. 
Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 yeah. All right. Well, because we're eliminating our twenty thousand um, dollar maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Two years. So we're eliminating our twenty thousand dollar maintenance budget. Right. Oh, true. And yeah. and um, and what we pay to for National Grid to own the lights too. Right. So that bill is wiped away. So what was the maintenance budget for? If National Grid, from what I understood, when National Grid owns the lights, they also maintain the lights. Correct. Which means every time there was a problem with a pole or a light, oh, you pay them we pay National Grid. To come. They it's not they built maintain. into the cost of running the lights. Correct. Or, oh, okay. Correct. They would maintain the town on lights That's why yeah. as well as their own. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Which was more of a flat rate, mm -hmm. I think, for most communities. I where see. where this, like I said, with PRT, we're just going to pay per light. Per light. So. As needed. Right? As needed. Mm -hmm. That's nice. So we could have zero lights in 2016 that are being repaired. Right. That's great. Beginning to end, how long do you think it, you know, the project took? Took us about a year, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of it was the timeline of town meeting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the fact that we had to acquire the streetlights from National Grid, securing the funding, that's really the difficult part. And then once we had that and we were able to go with the project, it's about eight weeks to purchase the lights and have them shipped. Mm -hmm. And then the implementation part is a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And you said you have one intersection left? We do, so we have. Is that all you have left, is just one? Yeah, w what happened was we had this intersection left and we have the lights for them. Right. But in the course of going through the town, we realized that there were these um, private lights as mm -hmm. well. Right. So instead of calling PRT back twice to do it, we're going to do it all in one. So we're just waiting. Yeah. Uh, because we're going to need a police detail. We're going to need for them to come back and forth from Westwood or wherever they're located. And it's just, it makes more sense for us to wait another two or three weeks and have them do it right. all at once. So that's a pretty good yes. timeline, though. To only have that left. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Do I get a chance to make a couple of comments at the end? Uh, sure. sure. Yeah. Well. yeah. Do you want to do it now, Eric, or do we want to do it when you do public comments? Public we'll comments. Yeah. We, yeah, you could comment now. Okay. Since we're on the topic. Okay. <coughs> um, do I need to get my name here? Sure. sure. Please. Uh, my name is Steve Hubbard, 45 Church Street in Auburn, and um, I think that uh, the LED lights are a great idea. I do think they'll save a lot of money, and that they are good in terms of longevity and illumination. My only concern is that, um, I don't know if everybody's aware of it, but they do come in different color temperatures, and the reason I want to mention that is color temperature is kind of like, and I've got a demonstration that I can just quickly show you on how it works. It goes from about 3,000 K, so-called, to about 7,000 K. 7,000 K, the higher end, has a lot more blue light. The blue light bulbs and the LEDs tend to be kind of blue rich, do have some potential health risks. Some towns that have bought into the higher t color temperatures have experienced some difficulties and complaints and issues and they've had to replace some of them. It's not quite as natural a light. It's and um, so. I just wanted to present a little bit of information about that. I just want to mention that because when you do this, and I, again, I'm all for it, this is a 20-year commitment, and you want to get the right lights. Uh, I think the town of Cambridge, I think, actually had to swap some out when they went through this because they were earlier on in the process, and they had ones that were at a higher color temperature that residents objected to. And just to demonstrate quickly what I mean, um, <coughs> These are two bulbs I bought at Home Depot. They're both the same manufacturer, both the same wattage and so forth. One is a 5,000K light and the other is about 2,700. 
and that doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So, That's so bright. This is the higher color temperature. It's bluer, and this is the lower color temperature. And I just want to suggest that when you do this, you kind of maybe look for a mid-range, something a little bit more pleasing in color. Um, if you're interested, I have something that uh, came from a Harvard Health Publications about blue light. Blue rich light does have some potential health implications. It has to do with some of the re uh, circadian rhythms, the rhythms at night that s they interrupt the sleep patterns, and some of it has to do with some disruption of uh, migrating animal paths and things like that. So, um, I just, you know, while it's early in the process, I was hoping to have a little bit of input and. Mm -hmm suggest that, uh, you know, and I'd be glad to talk to somebody if you want a little bit more information, that you probably want to consider some of the, the bulbs with a more pleasing light rather than just, you know, take a look and ask your consultants what color temperature have them demonstrated so that you can see what they look like before you get into this issue and spend all that money and time and effort and so forth. Because, again, it's a 20-year commitment, and once you have them, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to swap them out if people do object them. We have a lot more lights here than Sutton does, and they're more concentrated, so I think people would notice them perhaps a little bit more than they mm -hmm. might in certain parts of Sutton being more rural. Mm -hmm. so. Steve, do you know, just obviously, since you seem to have familiarity with it, what would be the difference as to going with a different color temperature? So why would anybody pick the, the bluer? Well, initially, the bluer ones were the only ones available. The technology is advanced now so that the warmer color temperatures are becoming more available. I think they can be slightly more expensive initially than the bluer light ones. They basically now can save about the, they're about the same wattage, they can do the same job as far as savings, but most of what's happened is that they started off with the blue ones and they didn't really know how to ha make the, the LEDs inside have that kind of more natural warmer tone and uh, they are becoming more prevalent now but it's still you know you have to be careful about what you get mm -hmm. just to make sure that you get the right type of light that you want for the roads and that one that will be pleasing to the to uh, the individuals I mean, if you go online and you do a little research you can find notices or references to some towns that have gone through the installation process and then had to pull the lights out because they were just too bright even though they can be dialed back because it's a very blue light, it's a harsher, kind of a stronger kind of light, or it appears that way to the eye. The eye, your eye is very sensitive to blue light, more so than you know some other wavelengths. So that that's where the issue comes in. Mm -hmm. Now, is that is that the the higher, uh, the high higher K? Yeah. Um, is that like getting towards what they consider daylight light? You know, because I've seen LEDs that soft, right. a soft light and a daylight now it, the daylight is like white I mean it blinding exactly um, that that's what it is I and mean, it, it, is yeah. that the same yeah and it's kind of like buying fluorescent tubes they have warm white and cool white cool mm -hmm. white is a bluer higher color temperature the warm white is a more natural color so it, it's it's both you want something that will accomplish the same purpose and that will give the adequate illumination but you just want to be careful that you get the right color. And again, you know, that there's strong, you know, blue light, you know, lights that are rich in blue, they, they have some potential health considerations too. And if you're interested, I did bring some handouts that I could leave. Sure, if you want you. to take a look yeah. at any of that. Yes, please, thank you. And the, the demonstration was very effective. Yes. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> Don't think I can see. That yeah. light is very blue. <laughs> right. <laughs> very bright. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great recommendation. I will follow up too and find out exactly what Sutton mm -hmm. uses. And maybe if one or all of you want to take a road trip up to Sutton one mm -hmm. evening and take mm -hmm. a look and and, yeah, and just really see, um, you'll be able to compare. You'll say, I know this is what Sutton uses, and we'd like something a little warmer for Auburn. Again. A, a great consideration is the fact that Auburn is much more condensed and because mm -hmm. it, Sutton is a more rural area it may have been a consideration but not so much for a town like Auburn or a town like Millbury that we'll probably be implementing in the next year too so I'll find that information out for you um, and I can also you. give you the consultant's name and he will be able to tell you overall um, what 
people are choosing, you mm -hmm. know, what Auburn chose as well, and I'm sorry, not Auburn, what Sutton chose compared to maybe some more condensed communities that are similar to Auburn. Okay? Great. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. All right. If there are no other comments at this point on the LED project, why don't we move to our next discussion item, which is an update on our solar project at the landfill. Fantastic. Sure. <laughs> so I have a letter of exclusivity that was passed along to my department. I brought it so that we can look at it together. Okay. And before we, we look at this, I'll just I'd like to provide a, just a little bit of information. So we met with David Cohen last month from Pumasco. Yeah. And he provided, I think, a, a majority of the questions that we had, mm -hmm. he seemed to cover in his presentation. And I passed those, that information along to Julie. And Julie expressed some concern between the two names, PMSCO and Power Management. And we, you know, poked around on the internet a bit to try and see if we could understand, you know, why we were getting two names and that sort of thing. Um, and essentially, you know, she, she got a little uncomfortable. So what I did was I reached out to Power Management and I spoke to their New England, um, the Director of Development. And I just, you know, asked him if he could clarify the relationship or you know what the connection is and who these gentlemen are that we've been speaking with and he confirmed that they are um, their channel partners so power management is based in Rochester New York and most of their employees are there and PMS go is they are basically hired by um, power management and they do the same type of work they're consultants, and they've they've worked on um, a number of projects here. As as they, you know, have the information that they basically told us matched up. So that, um, and he also was able to provide me with a reference, the town of Quincy, um, in their town manager's office. So I've reached out to that gentleman, and I'm awaiting a response there. Um, so there. I guess those were sort of like the follow-up pieces, um, the reference confirming what this, you know, what PMS go, what their relationship is to power management. I think it's all been um, pointing in a positive direction, but it's been important in order to, um, you know, create buy-in from the administration. And so this letter of authorization was given in the correspondence um, with the gentleman, Saban Rossi, that's who I've been speaking with at PMSCO. Um, and so I thought, you know, we could read through it together and I'd be curious if, if the committee has any comments on, on the letter. Basically, it is, it's, it's power management or PMSCO asking the town to designate them as their exclusive power consultants for this project. Now I see Power Management Company, LLC, mm -hmm. but I don't see PM Esco mentioned on this in this letter. Is it one and the same? I mean, do, I mean, does does the agreement is the agreement with Power Management, and then they just hire PM? They Esco. hire PM Esco basically to be power management's hands and feet okay. on the ground here. And the consultant that we hired was from PMS Go, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Did Julie have any concerns about us, or any just thoughts on us looking at other potential consultants? She, she would, she didn't necessarily advise it, mm -hmm. but it did come up in conversation. She mm -hmm. would certainly be, you know, amenable to it or would, I'm mm -hmm. sure she would appreciate it. 
so if if the committee you know would like to take that step I think we, we, were, we were leaning towards this company because there's no cash outlay on mm -hmm. the town's part. And I don't believe there was anybody else, right? I mean, correct, that we know of. That we know of. Let's put it that way. That we have references from. Well, that we, that we even are aware of a consultant that, that works like this one does. Mm -hmm. Because normally, I mean, they're working on our behalf, but we don't have to pay them. Right. It, you know, it's paid through whoever the the company is that, uh, or the firm, or whatever it is that the developer, the developer thank you, mm -hmm. that would be developing the uh, the solar farm, which, you know, if it all works out, it's a win-win for the town mm -hmm. because we're not paying anything; we're just going to be reaping the benefits. <laughs> and I don't know if there's any. I mean, how do how do we advertise for? <laughs> Anybody out there works for free? <laughs> yeah. So this would be one, I guess. You know, I would think of uh, some of our, some of our solar resources from even the energy fair of last year. Sure. So they would know who the consultants are, for they could potentially know who the consultants would be for projects like this. Right. That's so it. Yeah, that would be a good avenue to yeah. go through. I'm just wondering if it's just worth it for us. You know, looking at this, everything here speaks to what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. It's just that vendor rate of, you know, 0 0.1 watt. Uh, I don't know if that's reasonable or, you know, what that um, what that means. I think it's important for you to get to talk to the rep from from Quincy. I think that will be helpful. Right. Um, but I guess if if no one's objecting, would it be worth? to try to do a little research between now and the next meeting to see if there are any additional um, consultants like power management or PMSCO. Sure. Um, and if we come up dry, then at least we feel that we've done our due diligence mm -hmm. to research it. And if there is anyone, at least give them an opportunity to come in, to come and present, come and, yeah. present and speak to it, um, which will either just reaffirm what we feel we have <laughs> here with power management or give us another avenue to pursue. Mm -hmm. Did the town manager see this one? She yes. This, this, is she, was she okay with it? Or? She didn't really comment. She's, you know, at this point, I think awaiting to see how this process goes, to hear from Quincy, to, you know, mm -hmm. and to see where the, where the committee's leaning mm -hmm. in their advisement. Maybe before she digs too deep into. Mm -hmm. So there was also was it the town of Brookfield? North, they, Brookfield. North Brookfield. North Brookfield. That they had at least gotten this far with this letter of authorization yeah. that they started, but I don't think there were shovels in the ground or. The the uh, they had done a project that's a bit different than what we're what we're looking for, installing some solar on their facilities. I believe. Okay and they are on their second RFP okay. to do a landfill. Um, but they, that hasn't, they haven't gone through that process yet. Mm -hmm. So they're in the R RFP phase. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, do we, should we fight, do a motion for it or is it no, more I think just advisory at this point? We can do some research between yeah. now and the next meeting. Yeah, I think that's good. Because we're waiting on Quincy anyway, so mm -hmm. we might as well use the extra yeah. time. Sure. Efficiently. I'm assuming as always all the action items go to Eric. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my job. <laughs> And so hopefully, if possible, if there is somebody, maybe we'll see if we can get them out for the April meeting, if feasible. Right. If right. not, then we could just maybe revisit this. Um, and if there isn't, maybe, you know, entertain a motion at that point so we can at least get for the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. That, that's as well for me. Thank Great. You. All right. And our next agenda item is update on the community grant projects. So last meeting, we discussed the 2015 competitive grant briefly because I was closing that out. Mm -hmm. And that is now 
Uh, it's now closed, all of our projects are complete. And I put a table at the top of the sheet uh, as sort of a review summary of the, the projects that, that we had put together last year. And so we did an oil to gas converge <coughs> conversion at the town hall, which included an upgrade or a new, the installation of a new boiler, as well as an energy management system. That's the EMS uh -huh. acronym. And <coughs> what we have on the right are the anticipated savings for uh, resulting from that project. So we see, you know, 30,624 kilowatt hour reduction um, annually. Therms is units of, ga of natural gas um, using the in EMS system. It, we're estimating 1,700 uh, therm reduction with a total cost savings of, of 12,000. That's anticipated, so it'll be interesting to see how this works in real life. And at the police station, we installed variable frequency drives on two fans in the blo in um, the HVAC blower system, as well as two pumps that circulate hot water for the heat. And what those do is they'll they will slow the fan or the pump down when um, either hot water or cool air is not in demand. And then when it's in demand, it will ramp it back up. So instead of running at a constant rate, it's slowing down when it's not in demand. And that's anticipated savings of 26,000 kilowatt hours annually. Um, and right underneath, I just thought it was interesting to, to note that last year the town hall used an average of almost 12,000 kilowatt hours a month. And this project is proposing a reduction of 30,000 kilowatt hours over the year. So that's almost, you know, a reduction of three months electricity, mm. which is pretty great, or 20, 21, 22% reduction. And at the police station, um, we saw last year 23,000 kilowatt hours per month on average. And that's this is a 9.4% reduction in usage there the installation of the VFDs. So those are pretty, some pretty neat projects. Um, the application for the 2016 competitive grant was due last Friday. And I submitted an, ap an application um, asking in total 20, um, $229,273 in funding. And the projects, there's, there are seven projects total um, that are listed on the left side of, of the table there. And I uh, included the anticipated savings in kilowatt hours, terms of oil, cost savings where, where applicable, as well as the asking price on each project. Now, last year I asked, um, I, I sought funding in, is about the same range and received funding for these three projects. Um, a second, a, a fourth project wasn't funded. So it's it's based on um, DOER, they have a board that will review each application. It's a competitive grant. Um, the number of green communities in the state is only increasing, which means the number of towns asking for funding is increasing. Mm -hmm. The total we can ask for and receive is 250,000. So I, I tried to push as close mm -hmm. to that as I could get and anticipating an answer by June or July. That's great. And so did they approve on a per project or did they? Yes. So they you'll know per which project. Yeah. And the issue, the, the project last year that didn't get funded was a conversion project at the Miriam building, which is the small brick building next to the town hall. Mm -hmm. We ran a gas line there, a natural gas line, and we're heating with oil. But the payback on the project was, I think, in the range of 30 years. And because of the competitive nature of, of this grant, they couldn't justify funding a project that has such a long payback. So all of these um, I didn't include payback here, but the high school burner upgrade, I think, was a six or seven year payback. Um, the Bryn Mawr steam traps was a five year payback. 
the Auburn Public Library's five-year payback. So those are, I think, our highly competitive yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. And the others were um, anywhere from seven to 12 years. Mm -hmm. So we tried to, to keep the projects competitive. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know if you all have any questions or. Oh, be exciting to see what actually. Mm -hmm. Now would we be able to uh, apply for the grant for the street lights if that comes about? We should be able to. We could. If, like Dorian mentioned, this year and the previous year, street light conversion was a um, those those projects were eligible for funding, and if we're in a position next year, we could we could seek grant funding. But Unless these, we wanted to move sooner. Right. Hmm. I'm I'm hearing from if, if the process is going going to be reflected here in Auburn. I believe as I believe it, if we would have to go to town meeting for the mm -hmm. pro procurement of a of any any funds mm -hmm. that wouldn't we wouldn't be able to, to get that until the fall so but that would still I mean this is spring and then the funding is released in July mm -hmm. so if we got the funding in, in the fall I understand what you're saying we could move faster mm -hmm. yeah if the funding were there and it's one where it probably feels like the the return comes so quickly mm. that yeah. this this would be a perfect opportunity. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's everybody's hopping on the the comments that there's X amount of free, so much free cash. You know, the, at the meetings, um, which you know, according to the accounting department, there it really isn't. I mean, it's there, but it isn't. You know, but. Um, he did say the CFO did mention that some portions of it could be used for a one-time, you know, one-time uh, expense. Mm -hmm. But now this this the streetlight situation. Mm -hmm. You put the initial cash layout out. You could almost reimburse the money within two years through right. the savings. Right. You know what That's I mean? True. So we're going to borrow it, but it's going to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Put right back. So this might be something. I mean, if we decide to go forward with it, mm -hmm. that they would they'd definitely be interested. Yeah. After two years, we're only going to continue to net. It's just yeah. You know, once the project mm -hmm. is paid for itself, right. Yeah. Then it's all savings from there. Yeah. And so it just seems to me like knowing that the savings are so significant on the LED side. Mm -hmm. I I'd hate to see you have to something would have to get bumped mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in right. order. The, you know, and these are probably projects that oh, might grant, not, grant, yeah, right. might not get the relative these priority, but right. do because they're in your community grant process. So, yeah. and what if we waited until then, and then for some reason they didn't pick them, mm -hmm. then you have to go back. So it seems like, I mean, why I, wait? The, I, I, why wait uh, the time? I'd like to just stay with the grant application that we have here, and just go, you know, approach Eddie for. The mm -hmm. funding, you know, when we get more information on the you know, street lights, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. just say, hey, right. <laughs> here's the numbers. Look at, you know, take exactly. a look at them. And so, actually, just to circle back quickly on that, Eric, what are your thoughts for next steps on the street light piece? I know Doreen's going to do some research, report back. Is it, you know, worth having the consultant come in, or what do you think is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd like to. Mm -hmm. I think that's when we could probably move on sooner rather than right. later. And so she's going to send um, send over his his name and his contact. <coughs> and again, I don't know if this is another situation where there's got to be other consultants as well. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so do we want to start and hear from him, and then is that a seasonal repair? Is it something they only do in certain during certain seasons, like spring and summer, and then winter? Mm -hmm. and sounded yeah. like they put them up a lot in December. That's what it sounded like. Yeah, to yeah. Me. yeah. I mean, it was a pretty started. mild winter, pretty but mild it sounded December like right. <laughs> sounds like probably if they can get up there. It was early December yeah. that they started. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm just curious. I if believe it was something that was dependent on the season. On the season, right? And as far as the conversion goes, I wouldn't wouldn't be able to answer that, but. They, they are repairing streetlights all year round. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I just didn't know if it was something we should move on quicker if we want to get it done. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if they, after a certain date, they just see you next spring. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If they won't, maybe they'll start it in the summer, saying. finish in the winter, or right. you know what I mean? But right. once they, you know, to start the process, if they, they make you wait until right. spring or. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I could probably look into a little bit, Eric, and maybe you and I could talk, because I think maybe sure. what we could do is just for timing. So if, if we can get for the landfill someone out here in April, but do what we did for the municipal aggregators, is come up with a list of questions, yeah. find a couple of consultants or groups that we want, present them to them and ask them to come mm -hmm. yeah. to That'd be great. give them the questions in advance to come back to us and then get them all here together so that we're not spacing it out even more. Yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. if we, if there, so I know, I'll say this, I know that the town of Auburn is on a different tariff than Sutton was. Sutton was on a tariff where National Grid owned, like you said, all of their lights. Right. In Auburn, I believe we own about 250 lights. Kind of how many? I, I want to say it's around like 270 lights. Oh, okay. Yeah, we own we own most like a large, very large portion. Of right. The lights in town. And but they maintain the lights, and we are a tariff that it's called tariff five, and I guess it is sort of an outdated, grandfathered thing that doesn't really exist, mm -hmm. and they don't really like tariff five. <laughs> so I think National Grid would probably be favorable to us doing the conversion. Right having our own maintenance plan and you know since we already own the lights uh, but I do believe that, that that there are a few because we have state highways that are coming through I'm not sure how that is going to work with us are those lights going to be owned by the state are they owned by the town yeah, that's you know a good question. And, and that is part of what Doreen said they, the town approached National Grid and asked for the price I think that's that's where National Grid would come back to us and let us know how many we would need to purchase. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, the state thing. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. I know the traffic lights. You know, the state own state owns the traffic lights on the state roads. Right. But as far as, as, I, far would, as I would lights? think, they would be the same thing. But I imagine they they would be in the right know. way. Hmm. I would think it'd be the same. I don't know. Good is this like something that if, does Auburn have enough street lights? Has there ever been a complaint that there's a street without enough? Do you know? I don't know. I'm not aware. So is but that this something would be a perfect that we should, time yeah, to look into that. Look into that we look into that? I wouldn't mind a few more in my street for that. <laughs> <personal. laughs> I'm sure yeah. there's some type of standard, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, to go by. And right. Right. I just didn't know because this is a good time to if you're purchasing stuff to put right. it all together. We could put it in across the request to the highway department and see if there, are, yeah, if they have any lodge complaints. Right. Right. Do you think that would make sense? Sure. Yeah, that'd probably be. Mm -hmm. Through Bill's office would probably be where the complaints would. That's what I would imagine. Yeah. So we'll wait to hear back from Doreen. So Eric, you'll talk to the highway department. We'll wait to hear back from Doreen if we can get the name. I can do a little research into competitors, uh, just to see if we can come up with a short list and see what type of research. And we'll put it as an agenda item for the next meeting for us to use that time mm -hmm. to start to talk about. Um, to some of the questions that we want to ask mm -hmm. them similar to the matrix we did before right. and so then maybe we can try to tee it up to get uh, especially if we can find if there's any other consultant similar to power management for the april meeting but prepare at that april meeting to get folks out for the may may and try That'll to move good. that so then maybe at that we'll get everyone together and um be able to make a recommendation after that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I have one more piece of information to pass out. It is on the open meeting law training. I sent out that email, um, but I figured I would just give you a paper copy. And, you know, it's um, the open meeting law 
The intent is really to ensure transparency, um, you know, of the public, public process. When, whenever we're having public meetings, um, it's ensuring that they, that we are acting in a way that we are including the public and, and that nothing is happening um, where the public wouldn't have access to that information. And so if, you know, if you have the time and the interest, uh, this is a, it, this training is available. There's also an open meeting law manual on the state's website that is informative. You could read through it. Um, I'm not saying that it's required, but it is a good thing, you know, as um, as members of a public committee, just to be familiar with mm -hmm. and, and understand. Eric, do you know if they're going to do a recording? I think in the years past two, people can attend. I know there was That's one question. year. I think I had watched a recording of the actual training. It happened right. I think you came on right after the right after yep. of the training. You were able to watch a video. So, I'll. Uh, yeah, I believe that. I, I imagine it will be recorded because mm -hmm. they do that with the conflict of interest training and yep. you know, right. all of that too. So because it's only one day, so it's hard to have everybody mm -hmm. be available. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask about that. Right. Okay. Right. So you just show up. Show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are our other discussion. Uh, oh, registration. There's a registration for it. So, so apparently, there's. You are supposed to register for the, okay. for the okay. class. <laughs> so oh, there we go. Just show up. <laughs> Just show up. Just show up. <laughs> Is there any um, other public comment or informal discussions you'd like to have tonight? Great. So there's no formal correspondence, but we do have minutes which were sent out. Yep. So I think everybody has a copy of the minutes from the February 22nd meeting. Does anybody notice any updates, revisions, requirements? All right. Would someone like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes? I will. Second. All right. <laughs> Let's vote. Yeah. Approve the minutes. Right. By unanimous vote, the minutes for February 22nd have been approved. Let me just take this is quite barbaric writing here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not used to this. So, our next reg regular meeting will be April 25th. Uh, at 5.30 here at the Auburn School Department, 5 West Street. So other than that, I don't believe we have any other items. So I'd like to... Move to adjourn. Second. All right. Let's vote. Unanimous vote. We close the meeting at 6.44 p.m. Unanimous vote.